Peter Dennehy has lived in Kensington for almost nine years. I like the fact that you know it's a very established neighborhood. My mom lives around the corner. She's lived here for 15 years. The 50 year old is pretty sure he's never missed an election. Honestly, I was raised that way. <laughs> so I was, <laughs> I, you know, I, I went to vote with my parents and so I kind of was, mo that behavior was modeled. Most of Dennehy's neighbors likely vote too. In the 2014 general election, Kensington saw 62% voter turnout and one of its precincts had the third highest turnout in all of San Diego. It's kind of a tradition that I think people here seem to embrace. Um, you know, it's also a neighborhood that, that welcomes participation in every level. You see people walking their dogs, walking to the businesses. I'm standing in Kensington's bustling commercial area. People are walking to the Starbucks, an organic grocery store, and lots of local shops and restaurants. But drive less than a mile to the neighborhood's southern border. We're in an entirely different neighborhood. I'm reporter Megan Burks, and I'm standing here in the Tiralta district of San Diego's diverse mid-city area. It's a lot more frenetic than in Kensington to the north. People from all over the world live here, do business here, and catch buses here. My name is Mahmoud Azmin. Uh, my family's from Somalia, so basically Africa, the motherland. Um, it's only me and my younger brother who's born in the United States. Osman is 18 and says he'll be voting for the first time in June, but he represents a lot of white turnout here, hovers below 30 percent. Like Osman's mom and siblings, nearly half of the residents here were born outside the United States. That's compared to 12 percent in Kensington. Many can't vote because they're living in the country illegally or can't afford the costs associated with becoming a citizen. Others, like Osman's mom, are just too busy trying to build a new life. We don't pay attention to a lot of things because we want to, we want to, we want to know what can we do to, to, to have more income. Osman says he wants to cast his ballot on quality of life issues, including raising the minimum wage. The median household income among his neighbors is about $22,000 a year, compared to more than $90,000 in Kensington. Voting is a way for, for us people to have a voice as well, rather than just voting for presidency or you know, laws, you know, legalize this, legalize that. But can Osman and his neighbors truly have a voice when Kensington voters come out in force to decide elections? It makes me want to uh, definitely vote less in a sense, but I can't. You know, I want to set example for people. We all want better schools, you know, safe neighborhoods, you know, streets without potholes, all those same kind of concerns. Back in Kensington, longtime resident Jody Cleesaddle adds that the widespread in demographics doesn't necessarily mean there's a deep political divide between the neighborhoods. The poorer you are, certainly, the more pressing other is pressing issues you may have on your mind uh, that to where voting or or learning about particular candidates is less of a priority. As the June election approaches, we'll follow voters in both neighborhoods to learn whether that's true. And we'll look at state and national campaigns through their lenses. For KPBS, I'm Claire Tregesser. And I'm Megan Burks.